Our Friday nightcap still with us. Lots of people had huge weeks, so there's not a clear MVP, and I want to go around the horn. Who won the week for you, Mr. Allen, first? Uh, David Mandel, the uh, director of a new uh, series on HBO, White House Plumbers, and for two reasons. One, he's bringing Watergate to a whole new generation of people who don't know a lot about Watergate. And the second is he's bringing the rest of us back to a time in American politics where there was shame, mm -hmm. when people rejected people in their own party who were guilty of criminal activity. Right. Uh, and I think this is an important show. Uh, I've only seen one episode of it so far, but Molly, I think, has seen more, and she told me they keep getting better and better. Right. So uh, David Mandel's the MVP of the week. But shame, here's the problem, John, isn't coming back. <laughs> As we learned, and I'm saying this honestly through Donald Trump, Shame is Donald. Shamelessness is Donald Trump's superpower. superpower. For, for, I, yes, absolutely. But for now, um, I would say that in order to have shame in the future, you've got to have examples of it. You've got to see some of that. You've got to model that behavior. And certainly, there are a lot of Republicans who are ashamed of how Donald Trump comported himself. Whether that costs him the Republican nomination or not is. Well, I, it looks like it will not cost him the Republican. Okay, but look at the last week and a half, Clarence Thomas. How many ethics experts have come on television and say, this is an ethics violation, this is a huge problem? Unless Clarence Thomas's conduct is straight up illegal, He's going to keep on trucking. It's horrible to keep looking and seeing these headlines. of, the, And right. it's so funny how on the other side, everything is George Soros. Soros, right. Soros, Soros. <laughs> and no one's saying anything about, what's his name, Harley, Harlan. That's right. Harlan. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Nazi I, yeah. I, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. Even if it was straight up illegal, we've seen the process for impeaching. Right. In Congress, never right? like that, he's They're not never going out. anywhere. He's not going anywhere. There's Kevin no McCarthy's not bringing up uh, impeachment charges against Clarence Thomas. Sure, right? not. Guess yeah. what? They also can't call for anything because Dianne Feinstein's not there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clarence Thomas could eat a baby, and they can't do anything about it. We're <laughs> almost with oversight. Alex wouldn't. Jones and right. Trump, and but it's not going to happen with the Supreme Court. Okay, but I, it's no different from Congress and stock trading. It's no right. different from Correct. once you're sitting on the Supreme Court. Newsflash. You make the rules, and there's none for you. Right. That's, That's right. Not right. But That's none of the Supreme Court justices, just to be clear, have actually been accused of eating babies. Right. I know. Yes. I want to make that very clear. That is true. And John, yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for that imagery. Yeah. I can't yeah. unsee that. Thank That's you. Horrible. But thank you're thank right you. about Absolutely. the congressional stock trading, and that is one of the greatest, most, I mean, that is just so beyond infuriating. And most of the American people desperately want that. That's and right. guess what? Ain't nothing going to happen. All right, your MVP. Oh. Um, Representative Gloria Johnson, she is in Tennessee, one of the Tennessee three. I had her on my podcast this week and she is, you know what I love about her is she's a really good ally. And like she stood with the two Justins. Her district is much more red, much more Republican. She actually lost her seat and then had to run again. She has really like put her money where her mouth is. And so she and and, you know, she's been able to really be a good ally in a way that I really respect. And so I thought she was great. And I was you know, she continues to be a hero to me. She sure is. Uh, you gave us a preview of your MVP. I, I want you to tell us a bit more about her because and, and, and why she's your MVP, because when we see people whistleblow, whether it's Cassidy Hutchinson or Abby mm -hmm. in this case, mm -hmm. they're putting their livelihood, their lives, everything on the line. You're absolutely right. right. This is really brave what she's done, and she's done it against a, a, a formidable uh, competitor, if you will. And I just, I started to say before, I find it so fascinating that Fox treats its women, even the women that are loyal to them, so poorly mm -hmm. that, that the word is supposedly that Maria Bartiromo and... Um, and, oh, gosh, Judge help me. She. Yes, are going to be out. We don't know that, though. That's only a rumor. Right. That is only I a rumor. I wouldn't be surprised, though. And, and the fact that when Abby was working for Maria Bartiromo, she was the only one working for her. They didn't even staff the show. Right. Right. Uh, it, it's just the, the disrespect that she had to deal with and the bravery on her part to go ahead to sue them for hostile workplace, sexual harassment, and, again, that she has the receipts. Oh, and she's she shamed got them. <laughs> big the tapes. tapes. Yes, she's she got does. The tapes. Uh, Mr. Fugel Sang, who's yours? <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Senator John Fetterman. I, I ah. almost went with, almost went with the Oklahoma Gazette publisher who left the tape recorder on in the oh, room, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to go with Fetterman <laughs> because if you had told me that a U.S. senator would leave office for six weeks to recover from depression, and not lie and say he was hooked on painkillers right. or something else. I mean, there are so many men 
heterosexual men in this culture who will feel less stigmatized about asking for help because of the example John Fetterman made. It was incredibly strong and masculine to come out and not lie about his health, mm. but say, I am seeking treatment for depression after a stroke. It's going to save lives of others. There'll be ripple effects. If he never does anything in the Senate, he will have helped lives and inspired me forever because of this. And imagine if it was... Senator Oz, and we'd all need therapy. So just think about that. <laughs> but you don't hear nice that the turn. reverse will happen. Look how he's going to get, he has been getting beat up and oh, annihilated. Oh, so much. Yeah, by anonymous cowards on Twitter who yeah. lack the manhood yeah. to show their faces. That's right. Yeah. That's and he was always it. a target. I mean, always. And, and but he has a very be. good Senate staff, and those guys are going to do some great stuff. He's got a really loyal team. All right, final topic. There has been a huge debate on social media this week, not just anonymous bots, people mm. weighing in with their names and their faces. Mm. Who should clean up after your children if oh. they make a mess on a plane? An absolutely viral tweet from a professional baseball player, a pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays, about a flight attendant who told his pregnant wife that she needed to clean up after their two kids made a mess with popcorn on the floor. I know I have an opinion, but I'm not going to share mine first. What do you think about this? Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. My yeah. kids should clean up the popcorn. Thank yes. you. That's Thank right. you. Thank you. Yes. If you eat the popcorn, you clean up the popcorn. Yes. It's a good life lesson. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Even if they're little ones. Also, you Especially don't drop a whole bag ones. in one shot. As soon as they start to fall, you're Hit like, you know what? Off. We're not going with popcorn. Today. Right. What's your take? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I agree. I, I, the only thing I would say is she's pregnant. Being pregnant is horrendous. If she's alone with the two kids and she's pregnant... I mean, I can travel with children is really hard. I mean, my kids are a little bit older, but I could see how you could get yourself into a position where you're just trying to sort of keep your head above water. Yeah, there are other people on the plane, and I, the human behavior on an airplane is so crazy. People see pregnant mothers, mothers right. with small children, and they go away from them. Yeah. They don't try to help them. Yeah, but that's uh, what I kept thinking. I'm like, if I was in that woman's row, before the flight attendant even rolled up, I'd be like, let me help you out here, yeah. lady. No. Like, I don't know how that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, but I like the point of the kids should learn at an early age to pick up after yourself. Right. And yes. then to be not rude, but I was wondering how pregnant is the lady? I mean, is she... She's 26 weeks. That's pretty pregnant. Oh, okay, okay. And she's flying on an airplane with two, like, little toddlers. I mean, I don't know. I've seen... That's a rough. It, it can be hard. I, I didn't yeah. want to sound hard-hearted, yeah. but I just wondered. No, you know, no. She's... Like the Ohio legislature, uh, Iowa legislature, I support child labor. And, um, <laughs> and I really... I, Forced labor. But again, it depends Literally. on the age of the child. Definitely right. make the kid clean up. But if it's a baby... Well, I don't get to judge people with babies on airplanes. Right. Having been one there, but for the grace of toddlers, go I. Aww. I just, I, 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 it's so tough That's to bring a child on a plane. And if you can survive it without the kids screaming the whole time, I don't get to judge any mess you leave. Well, I would rather kids on a plane than snakes on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that was nice. Yeah.